Well, to, to me, it's real simple. There's a. It was called the old Seattle Trade Center, which was where they used to do uh, ski bunkers down on the waterfront along the railroad tracks. And that was a building that had at one time 550 tenants in it. And each tenant took up a lot of space, like a closet. It was a huge building, 350,000 feet. And all the leases were on napkin papers, about this big. And that building was purchased and all the tenants got thrown out and it got rehabbed successfully. But what was really interesting about it is that across the street, there was a parking and, and nobody put the value on the parking. That's what taught me right then and there that parking is commercial real estate as well. And air is commercial real estate because we took that and we put a fake, a fake development project planned together and the people up on the hill in the regrade didn't want to lose their view, so they bought the air rights. And then there was another project not too far further down towards Pioneer Square where the city bought the land underneath the building for the tunnel creation. So air and subterranean also are commercial real estate. That was an interesting lesson learned. One of the more interesting sales was the what used to be the Safeco building in the university district. That building just was the only 12-story building in the entire complex, or the entire area. And it also went with a uh, residential unit um, across the street. And what made it so interesting is the variety of buyers that wanted to take a look at it and everybody had a little different idea of what they were going to do. Was it going to be a hotel? Was it going to be residential? Was it going to be an office building? But as we were getting closer, I went to a meeting with the University of Washington Board of Directors to talk to answer their questions. And I looked around that room and I went, they had a very definite plan it was so close to the university, they had a definite need for some additional administrative space. And I thought, okay, there's no question. If these people want to buy that building, they're gonna have this building. And that was exactly who bought the building. And it was just an interesting play. It, the other buyers were sort of had an idea of what they wanted to do, but the University of Washington definitely knew they wanted that building, it was in the right location, and they were going to have it. And it was just a fun sale and fun to work with them as a buyer um, and see the building actually go to the type of use that it was meant to be. You know, there were two others that come to mind as well. What Microsoft did out there, that changed the east side. But Kemper Freeman has really done some amazing stuff as well. And I didn't do any business with Kemper, but I see what he's done in downtown Bellevue. You, you get, somehow you gotta take your hat off to those Amen. accomplishments. Especially it's, if you it's, remember it's, what that little shopping center used to look like. Oh my like. gosh. I mean, who would imagine that as successful a retail center as there is in America, in the world, on a price per square foot of retail sales in the location where it is with no freeway access it's remarkable what he's done i i totally agree and the university university village oh, on a mid-size yeah. center it is also one of the most successful centers in the united states yeah the most interesting deal that that i was somewhat a part of because i was a manager and not a broker and spent most of my career would it be the uh, old Sears Distribution Center in South Seattle. So Sears at the time made the election to get rid of this large distribution center. And it was for sale, never forget it, for uh, $12 a square foot, which is an unbelievable price. <laughs> and we had a heck of a time trying to get rid of this thing. And it was Russ Johnson and Rick Oser out that had the listing on it. And we just could not get rid of it. Nobody wanted it. Why would you want this old decrepit building? It's falling apart, but it was right there 
what is now known as you know the stadium district. And Sam Catalano finds a buyer out in New York by the name of Frank Stegen that oh, comes in yeah. and Frank takes a look at it. And we tour this old distribution center, huge floors built like a concrete bunker, unbelievable structure. And we're standing on the roof overlooking back towards downtown Seattle and Frank's on the, on the balcony, we're talking about it. And a seagull flies over and drops a deposit on Frank's jacket. <laughs> and Frank says, well, that must be a sign. I guess I have to buy it. <laughs> and six months later, Frank ends up closing on the Sears Distribution Center, and uh, which is now known as uh, Starbucks Corporate Headquarters. But it just goes to show you that if you want to play in commercial real estate, and I would give any anybody this advice, is... Train uh, a seagull. Yeah. <laughs> Look for seagulls. <laughs> is you've got to take on some risk. So rather than trying to protect your capital, which could be invested in T-bills, I suppose, and earn a guaranteed return, go make a bet and see what happens. Make it happen.